Ninety-five years after the Constitution guaranteed that Americans would not be denied the vote on account of their race, men and women in Selma, Alabama, had to put their lives on the line to make that language real. Recently, Congressman John Lewis led 20 other members of Congress back to Selma to reenact an event that finally won black Americans the vote and nearly cost him his life. Here's tonight's Eyewitness Extra, Selma, Alabama, then and now. It all comes together in Selma. Today, the place looks about the same as it did 34 years ago. But Sunday at 10.30 is still the most segregated hour in town. White folks go to the White First Baptist Church. Black folks go to the Black First Baptist Church. Very little social intermingling. You have your separate country clubs. You have a, a White Elks Club here and a Black Elks Club. You get a White Masonic Lodge and a Black Masonic Lodge. So I don't know what the answer is, but I don't think in our lifetime we'll ever see any significant changes. But some things have changed. You've gone to an all-white to a virtually all-black government. And uh, also, it's interesting to note that because of the Voting Rights Act, uh, white politicians need the black vote to win and vice versa. The Voting Rights Act entered John Lewis and company. Day after day in the mid-60s, they lined up at the courthouse steps to register. Move. Day after day, Sheriff Jim Clark turned them away. Jim Clark was a big man. He wore a button on his left lapel that said, never. Never to voter registration, never to integration. And he was a man that was quick to lose his, his temper. He was mean. And he guarded this place like it was his own castle. He hustled you right down the sidewalk. Yes, he did. And threw me in jail and charged me with criminal provocation, whatever that is. But uh, it gave me more courage and more determination to fight even harder. On March 7th, 1965, in Selma, Alabama, whites had the vote, blacks did not. On that day, John Lewis and Hosea Williams led a march, like this one, across this bridge, the Edmund Pettus Bridge, for Montgomery. They were going to confront Governor George Wallace directly and demand the vote for African Americans. Wallace sent state troopers. They were met by the troopers and mounted sheriff's deputies armed with billy clubs, bull whips, and tear gas. They broke up the march, injured nearly 100 people, and fractured John Lewis's skull. This is a reenactment of that event. I thought we were going to be arrested. I'm not, not beaten. Yeah. When I was hit, I, I, I thought I was going to die. I thought I saw death and stabbed it down. I thought I was taking my last breath. You could just see people running everywhere, just all over the place. And from there, then the police and posse on, on the horses with the billy clubs, hidden skulls like they was playing polo. And I don't think I'll ever forget that day. It, as a matter of fact, it's taken me a long time to come back. I opposed the march, but we thought it all would happen, they'd be arrested if they didn't turn back. Joe Smitherman, mayor of Selma, then. We've had in our area here outside agitation groups of all levels. We've had Martin Luther King, uh, King pardon me, sir, Martin Luther King. Joe Smitherman now. Had... Wasn't it your responsibility to lead your constituents? Sure, and, and my constituents then was a white vote. We had uh, about 10,000 white voters and about 150 black voters. I mean, lead them in the right direction, in the direction of, of a just society. Well, first, we didn't know that was going to happen, as I've explained. I was a segregationist. So, you know, uh, I, I, I fought for segregation, but not brutal or with any violence. I worked to, to try to maintain segregation. But it, it looked back now, and it was foolish. We have come to register to vote. Someone will live with that forever. Why do you have to keep marching? <laughs> you have to continue to march because we still have bridges and rivers to cross. Yes, we have to yes, continue sir. to build bridges of understanding, bridges of reconciliation, and to bring people together. It's an ongoing struggle. It's not one that lasts for one day, or one week, or one month, or one year, or one decade. Yeah. It is a struggle of a lifetime to build a beloved community. How do you survive Bloody Sunday without despising the thugs who attacked you? You adapt, you adopt nonviolence, John Lewis says, not as a technique, but as a way of life. You might, for example, picture the person who attacked you as an infant, as the pure, innocent child that he once was. 
John Lewis says it's not hard then to find forgiveness. Not hard for him, for example.